always asks me if I'm sure that I want to start the stream, and every time I see that anywhere, I'm like, do I have everything <laughs> that I need to make this work? Okay, um, make some music. Love my headphones on later. Then I'm gonna record this because uh, if everything goes well, I'm going to use this uh, footage for my next video. So the scribbles are on the screen because um, I want to kind of focus my camera. So I'm gonna do some scribbles first. I have kind of an idea for a style. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have an idea for a style that I would like to do, and that doesn't involve this brush. I will use one of my like prototype brushes if everything goes according to plan, but things rarely do, so it's too early to tell. That's why I wrote even that in the frequently asked questions uh, part in the description because people usually ask the same things in these live streams. So first I'm gonna just like get some shapes going so I have a better understanding what it is that I'm doing. saying oh my god i have to study but i want to watch this stream too this stream will be here after it's done unless something goes wrong but anyway i would prefer that you study and don't watch this stream to avoid studying because you can watch this stream later it will be here most likely streams if you want to catch one live this won't be the last one unless i get hit by a bus which could always happen but not good to live life thinking that's the next thing that is going to happen but it is good to like be aware that like i am going to die and that makes me lose my own time more efficiently so small right now. Uh, I don't know why I just got this weird menu thing visible on screen right now. I'm gonna try to fix that. Maybe it's because I have a Photoshop open in the background. Uh, 
Let's just like drag this out of the view. Maybe. At least it's now gone. <laughs> Askiv is saying uh, hello Mikko from New Zealand. Hello New Zealand. Welcome. I hope that you are doing something uh, <laughs> on your own, like your own paintings or stuff, because otherwise it's just too much pressure to get something reasonable done here. Randy Taylor is saying me too. Math is my enemy in school. Yeah, same. I was terrible at math. I guess I still am. Somebody was asking what brush I'm using. I'm using for print for just color blocking, but I'm probably not going to use this for the final piece. canvas size is like super tiny too, so I need to uh, remind myself to increase it later. I want to use the small size for now just to block in the stuff, so that I have a better idea that what I can do with this whole thing. This is water, it needs to be darker at least for now. I from Iceland just woke up this perfect this is perfect while breakfast. Ah, I wish I was in Iceland. I have one palette that I have used many times and it's called Iceland. It's one of my favorite palettes. And it's probably like my most monochromatic ones. Let's show it to you. Feel free to steal it from this live stream by screen grabbing. Where is it? This one. This is Iceland. I love it. This wave one is like really different to what I usually do, but I 
think it's interesting because it uh, kind of spawns different paintings just from the fact that my mind comes up with different ideas when I see these colors. I'm not going to like pay attention to the layer right now because that's like way too complicated stuff. I need to just like block in idea so that I will have a better understanding of what this painting idea is. I can't repeat that uh, palette name that you said. Like, all Icelandic words are just like a soup of letters and consonants. Like, every waterfall that I visited in Iceland, I just like will never be able to pronounce any of them. People say that Finnish is a really hard language to learn, which it is, it's true. But I think Icelandic is a very di di difficult language to read. It doesn't sound that difficult when you speak it, but it looks impossible. Also, sorry if there's anybody who was in the live stream yesterday. I know that this might be like a bit too much having two live streams on consecutive days, but I have a good reason. And the reason is um, I got this uh, birthday present from my boyfriend that we are going to Lapland tomorrow and we will be there for, for the entire week. So I won't be able to do any video content, so I felt stressed that I need to produce some like content for the people that have joined my channel. So I decided to do that live stream, and I was able to like finish color editing that jellyfish painting, which I think turned out great. I think it's a great. Uh, illustration to use as an example for color editing because I really think that the final result uh, shows what that process does to the image and if you're not a member you can just like uh, see the last few seconds of the live streams uh, when I did the initial painting because that is available for everybody Look at that painting and then look at the post that I just posted today and that is the result of like editing.
will check the comments in a second, I think. Just now, kind of getting a clue what this uh, illustration could be about. It's always exciting when you get to that moment when it's kind of starting to slowly emerge. At least it's for me, I don't know. Maybe it's like super frustrating for you when I'm just painting quietly. That's why I always recommend that you do some art on your own while you watch these. So I just don't want to have the burden of like being all the entertainment during this uh, <laughs> session. Sultan. Sultan was yesterday in the live stream uh, for editing. While I love that there's a live stream today, I don't want. I don't think any of us want you to feel any kind of stress about perceived obligations to us. It's not really stress because I I had fun doing the edit, but at the same time it is work. Um, one of the things that I have been pushing off is playing the new Monster Hunter. And I guess it was just a sponsored video. It has its like specific deadline, and I completely missed that <laughs> because I just couldn't do the edit fast enough. I remember there was some kind of like technical thing that I messed up that ended up costing one more day in the rendering phase. And I like doing these paintings. I mean, while it is work and while I do feel like exhausted at the end of the day when I have been painting all day, I honestly wouldn't be... I rather wouldn't do anything else. It is the most fun thing for me. Do my own illustrations. So one day this week, uh, I think it was not yesterday, but the day before that, I made that uh, countdown timer uh, for the live stream that I used for the first time yesterday. And the, making that countdown timer, it took an entire day. And I don't remember being that excited about editing like ever. It was so fun that I could like hardly contain myself. I'm really happy with the end result. I honestly think that the countdown looks much better than what my editing skills are. I just landed on like a fitting design for my channel by sheer luck. I don't want to blend the colors too much here because I'm keeping my options open that this might uh, look good as a L shaded image. I'm gonna put the music a bit over for my headphones. Okay. How often do you change your pencil tip? Never. I haven't changed it even once. 
can't see why I would. Like it looks just like new. Also, I have a, a Wacom tablet here next to the computer, and I have changed that stylus tip once. And I've used it over 12 years or something crazy like that. I think the Intua stylus is like super high quality, it's like durable as a rock hasn't broken on me once. Cintiq feels quite flimsy in comparison and also Cintiq feels like very clunky compared to the Windows one. But honestly, after doing art all this time now with an iPad, I can't see myself uh, switching back to traditional drawing tablets. Especially non-display tablets, I think they are just like done for me for good. Except maybe for sculpting. I can see myself like getting out my tablet to do sculpting. But not for painting. For painting I would just use my tablet. Gaetano Pairo is saying, Hey Nico, I still have to. Oh, sorry. That went on. I still have to open my Instagram profile, but I'd like to send you a simple artwork to thank you for all the insight you provide us with. Can I use the email provided in your YouTube info? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, but honestly, I would rather have all of you post artwork on your own Instagram profile so that it's public, so that everybody can enjoy it. I have sometimes people send me paintings that they are kind of like afraid to publish on their own Instagram feed. I don't know if this is the case with you, I'm just saying in general. And I, I think it's a shame if I'm the only person who gets to see that. Also, sometimes people uh, send me artwork and like expect me to critique them. Um, I don't do like art critiques for free, nor I do them for money online in a way where I write the feedback. Like the only critique that I have done 
is uh, through the sort of like uh, Zoom meetings with uh, clients that are usually freelance artists. Oh. This might, um, I don't know how many of you are like art teachers out there, but I think the kind of uh, feedback where you are not seeing the person that you are talking to and you are just writing feedback on a text format, I think that is like complete bullshit and I will have no part in that now or ever. So, yes. I don't think we as a art community, we don't talk about the quality of feedback and we are so easily like um, going to this like humble mode of like how we should like accept all feedback as like great and uh, opportunity to grow but there's like giving feedback is so hard it's a really difficult skill and it's a very specific skill and it's not the same skill as learning to paint just because you learn to draw or to paint doesn't mean that you're good at giving feedback it might mean that like you're absolutely terrible at giving feedback and it's a skill that you need to learn and practice before you can get better at it. I, I for one, fully admit that when I started uh, working professionally, I was in a situation where I needed to give feedback constantly to people, especially non-creative, non-artist people. And I was terrible at it, like everybody is in the beginning. And it took me a really long time before I even noticed like, hey, I'm actually crap at this and what do I need to do to get better at this and to be more uh, effective uh, as a concept artist. So one of those things that is just like a f what I call that is going under, under the BS line is feedback that is in text format. Like when somebody sends me feedback that is just like in text on some kind of project that is not even in like live situation and they have no responsibility over the results of the project that makes me lose respect quite quickly and i don't think it's helpful i don't think it's actually like beneficial to anybody involved but the light direction is completely wrong but there's something about these colors that i like Maybe it's not wrong, I don't know. It's too early to tell. Try different hue variations. Usually when the colors um, have harmony together, like for example these greens and yellows, they can take a bit of like this like hue lighter changes without breaking. Because if the value and saturation ratio is good, then the harmony stays even in different hues. That's why if you, for example, um, have a palette like this, and then you just take a screenshot of it, you can use this screenshot in Procreate and use the hue slider on the palette itself and just create new palettes out of the existing one and they will probably be like usable as they are sorry i didn't check the chat there's probably some reactions to my massive friend <laughs> but I, I really do feel like really strongly about this and i do think that the industry people are hurting because we don't have a good culture of how to give good feedback, we don't have any guidelines for it, and uh, we, we don't have any best practices. It's not just about like you have to listen to all kinds of BS that some art director somewhere or some producer is saying, like, feedback can be really bad. And before we like start a discussion on how to improve it, we can't get there. And I think that starts with like acknowledging and best practices and for me one of those is definitely zero feedback so that people can't see me or hear me you have to hear my tone when i'm speaking about the illustration so that the person hearing the feedback understands that 
I have their best intentions in mind and that I mean well because if you try writing feedback you can read that in any tone possible and if you read it in the wrong tone in your head it immediately becomes just garbage or even harmful the same words if you don't see my face when I'm saying it C saying hi what's the best way to contact you for professional stuff my email my email is uh, visible on my Instagram is it maybe it's on this channel or Instagram DMs I can't re reply to all the DMs by the way so <laughs> apologies in advance but I try I try my best Sometimes, like for example, next week when I will be in Lapland, I will try to focus on just enjoying the vacation as well. Because I have been working like a madman for so many days in a row, for weeks, at least three weeks. I kept thinking that like once Monster Hunter comes out, then I will have everything done and I can just back and enjoy it. No such luck. I don't like the head to limbs ratio here. Paul Martin is saying, do you just uh, do you just start putting down color without knowing what you are painting? Yes, <laughs> every time. His voice is like Cynix's. I like Cynix's channel. Watched a lot of it. Cynix is like incredibly versatile artist. I think. That is rare. You can draw realistic stuff and like very anime stuff and stylized things. Really cool stuff. Also, I love one of his uh, self portraits. Great. Dusa. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Is that Dusa? Ruben is saying, do you think? That will help with painting if I know what artistic style I am painting. <sighs> Depends on how long you have been painting, really. I think, especially uh, beginners, if you have been painting for less than four years, people tend to like way overthink the whole style thing. You don't have to kind of sink down with one style, just do however many styles that you want to do, and paint with all of them. And of course, in, ti in life, time is limited, but time isn't that limited that you don't have time to get good at multiple styles. You can, if, you, if that's something that you want to do. I 
I'm having trouble keeping up with the chat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kaitano is saying, I'm going to post it on my Instagram once I open it, but since I named the artwork Sisu, I have to send it to you. Uh, Sisu is the most Finnish word there is, and you have to be Finnish to understand what Sisu means. I will not be able to explain it to you. Someone mentioned mandala. I feel like doing like a lotus flower here would be nice. A very, very chunky lotus flower. showing about this character is like my complete lack of knowledge on how to do an actual crocodile so I think I'm gonna do this in a way that I usually do these sort of animals that I'm just going to wing it and convince myself now that like once this stream is over and I'm going to move on to like police and details and such that I will look for reference, but at that point I will have already fallen in love with the <laughs> type like guess of what an actual crocodile looks like, and I will probably think that this is better than fixing it. Doesn't it have like this sort of like horizontal stripes on top, like a grilled toast? See, I really have no idea. <laughs> situation where the things that I'm doing are useless, so these might as well all be on the same layer, because all of this is going to be useless. Unpronounceable is saying, um, do you have a vision of what you're gonna be a, you know, what you're gonna be painting, or are you always just freestyling on canvas? Freestyling, I mean, 
in an ideal world where I would have enough time, I would have perfectly planned out what I'm gonna be doing in this live stream, and it would be way less stressful for me because I could just like show up here and do the pre planned thing already, and you would all think that I, I'm amazing at painting because it always seems like I know what I'm doing, but no such luck. This is basically just like me. Uh, call this like YOLO painting. <laughs> And I'm kind of in the same situation as I was uh, with my uh, previous video, like I said, that I started the live stream simply because I actually needed to get a painting done, like, seriously. And then I started the live stream that I knew that I would have something at the end of it. And this is the same thing, I am now shooting this, what I'm doing because I know that I won't be able to progress this uh, in Lapland because I won't be able to shoot what I'm painting with the same equipment. I might take the stand that is for like my phone, but I don't think I will be able to work on the on short video way. They might just call me and say that like everything about you is cancelled right now, please don't contact us ever. <laughs> If I didn't make that already quite clear, I'm going to be making line art over this whole thing. So these are kind of... this is sketching. This is the same as somebody would be doing a rough sketch before they do a craft on top of it. I might as well show it to you right now because I will not be able to do all of that during this live stream. There's just no way, because this is a very uh, time-consuming thing, but I'm gonna so what I'm gonna do with this. So I'm going to use this chunky line art brush. The chunky line art brush is a brush that I added to my brushes for painter set and it's not one of the 10 brushes. I kind of like sneaked it in there as an extra brush because it's just too useful and I thought that if somebody likes to use it then there's really no downside of like giving people more than they paid for. Anyway, what I love about this brush is that... Um, I'm gonna turn off this layer so I can show you closer. So, I don't know if you can see, but... It is almost 100% opacity, but it's not quite. And when it overlaps, then you can tell that there is a light translucency in this brush. So this is a line art brush for doing like clean art line art. And I love it because it's kind of like perfect in between line art way for me to add lines so that it still has that sort of like warm handmade look but at the same time I can make like really clean lines because it has a lot of like smoothing in it. So I'm gonna use this line art brush and do a line art version on top of this sketch and then I'm going to color those lines. But I'm gonna do it on a new layer and I'm going to lock that layer so I can use colors on those line art lines. Does that make sense? If that doesn't make sense, I can explain it. But, um, yeah, that's my plan basically. And what I'm now doing here, so using paw print, yes. Is uh, I'm using this brush that is more like suited for painting, is because then I can color pick these sort of in between colors and find the right colors that way. But in the final result, they will be just like uh, just full opacity pools of color. And I'm going to use uh, one brush from my 
graphic painting set for those. And it has that same sort of smoothing, so it fits with the Sandline Art Brush. Oh, unpronounceable is actually Versa. Uh, Violet Jewel is asking, did you feel any worry or fear when you were getting your puppy? Uh, it, it's not over. <laughs> I feel... Uh, let me see. Fear and worry constantly. We were just on a walk before I started this live stream, and right when we left the door, she immediately got this like huge, like huge chunky crack candy that had still the candy inside, but like in foil and plastic wrapping over it. And it's like so big for that small dog that it was like filling her entire mouth. So I picked her up and like just held her like this. I hold her so that she's sort of like in a downward tilted position until she lets go of whatever she's biting. I have few times tried to like open her jaws and get the thing, but few times I have uh, made her panic in a way that she has, for example, swallowed this uh, plastic net thing. So this sort of like hanging the dog in a diagonal position until she lets go seems to work better and I constantly worry what she's about to eat. I have already opened her jaw and gotten like this large chunk of clear glass out of her mouth. And she was very angry that I got the piece of glass out of her mouth because she likes to have these uh, chunks of ice that she carries around and she was super angry. So every time something like that happens, my heart completely stops. And it's a miracle that I'm able to keep her alive at all. I don't know how you get used to that stress ever. <laughs> it's horrifying. I'm so worried that something bad will happen to her. I mean, just with that piece of glass, she could have just killed herself. I don't understand how somebody can like break an entire jar on the street and just leave it there. So irresponsible. I think for the line art I might use uh, the train trip to do some of the line art. I don't know if I can do that 
already had movements in the train, but it would make sense that I use, for example, the screen capture for that. Because when doing line art, the contrast is so high that it's not usually great for any type of camera. So having that footage be screen capture instead might be um, harder. Besides, it would look uh, weird when I do the same lines over and over again, which I have to do because I have super, super shaky hands. And it has nothing to do with my massive cup of coffee. <laughs> it's a problem. But I have, I have super shaky hands. I think it needs uh, some dark deep blues. is saying, Mikko, have you ever redrawn your older art, even just to see how much better you've gotten over the years? I have taken some of my old paintings and I have um, edited them to be better. Just like made small tweaks. There's no point in like making the whole piece from scratch if it can be fixed. I am the artist, so I can do that. But I am not happy about is that when people do this like for example instagram posts where they have a painting that they have made when they started and a recent version of it then inevitably somebody has to be the one that says that i like the old one better i mean like it's just so like seeing those comments on other people's artwork like always annoys me People change, people's styles and taste changes. And people can be so uncaring, unsupportive. I guess I have grown most in the, like the technical sense of painting, just by virtue of painting every day for hours and hours, for years and years, uh, because of work stuff. But so much of my work has uh, been about design and concept design. But I'm not sure that those have changed that much. Because when I started doing concept art stuff, uh, I think I always took the purpose of what my art is used for quite seriously. 
and it wouldn't even make sense to look at some of those pieces and think that like, can I do this better? Because like, if you think about them as an illustration, then of course I could do some of those things better. But when it's something that I had only like, three hours to paint, I think I have in that situation done the best that I can with the design and most of concept art is not illustrations. Uh, I think this is the biggest misconception that people have about concept art as a job. That concept artist is not doing illustrations all day. It's a very rare occasion when you actually do illustrations. What people mostly see that are perceived to be concept art those are like finished illustrations that are kind of approved for promotional purposes. It's not actual concept art of like figuring out how that place looks because they, those don't need to be like finished paintings. They need to just be interesting ideas. And an interesting idea can even be... I've done a lot of concept art on just like on chunky uh, markers on these post-it notes. Sometimes even on the desks people that were going to do the 3D model later and then I was just like here here's your <laughs> here's your concept art now I'm gonna need to go and do some other work I don't think anybody like associates that uh, as a concept artist work most people just think about these um, promotional illustrations when they think about concept art Is it true that Corgi said like crazy? I am going to say that every time you see me wearing a bl black t-shirt on these live streams, it's a black t-shirt that I take straight from the closet, <laughs> not something that I was already wearing. Also Vivi is like... Uh, half black and the belly side is white fur so I guess there's probably like even double the fur that I just see only half of it on my clothes it's a lot they have two coats of fur both of them equally fluffy Jermik is saying, hello all. Mikko, do you do art for NFTs, crypto world? Um, I have been looking into uh, NFTs recently and I asked about them. Sorry. I live next to a fire station. Um, I was asking people on, for example, Twitter that like, um, just any good resources on like information about the environmental effects of NFTs and I have to say that like people did not <laughs> respond with a reasonable discussion on this uh, there are some who think that like NFTs are just like pure evil but at the same time those are just perfectly fine, like flying airplanes. I care about the environment, but for example, I have to like acknowledge the fact that like I do use airplanes to get from places. So if I cared about it more, I would just not travel by plane ever again. And I don't think these things are like black and white. And it's still in a phase where I just don't have enough information. Some people were saying that like, look at these threats that are happening on Reddit. Well, Reddit is not like, really a reliable news source for me. So I'm just monitoring the situation and trying to figure out uh, what it is and how to approach it. 
there are things that like I find exciting about NFTs, like for example the fact that there is ownership and it's actual art that is not commissioned by a person, so it's like completely made by the artist and sold without any like third party in between. That is something that has never happened before. I think that, that stuff is exciting, but there are still these environmental factors in the whole cryptocurrencies part of it. I don't think, from what I know right now, I don't think the whole NFT blockchain thing should even be that important because we could have a completely different uh, system for proof of authenticity that does ha has nothing to do with blockchain at all. It's completely glued on just because it's cool now. <laughs> and if that's where the industry is going, then of course, like my opinion has like no part in what happens with that. But for example, when there was this whole um, thing about uh, this artwork that was a banana taped to a wall, it has been sold twice for about hundred thousand dollars. It's an art piece that has been sold to two different clients. They didn't buy the banana. The comedian is the name of this artwork that is stuck on a wall. They bought the concept of how to tape the banana to show as their own artwork in a gallery. So to me that is the exact same thing as like owning an NFT. But there just needs to be like an official proof of authenticity the same way. But right now the internet has decided that this is completely inseparably tied to blockchain. And the people who have created the system have said for years that they are looking into some sort of like proof of authenticity system, but it just hasn't happened yet. But what I don't like about the conversation that is happening about this is that like people are not actually discussing, they are just like shouting their own opinions and it's completely void of facts but that I don't appreciate. So it seems like I just need to wait and see. There are some uh, kind of owner requirements that I have for now, if I were ever to do NFTs. Because if I had enough money, I could just say that I don't care about this at all. I mean, it's easier to have these sort of principles when you are wealthy, and then you can just say that like, if it harms the environment in any way, I will have no part in it. I would love to be that wealthy, so I could say that. I'm not. But if there are, for example, changes to the way that the NFTs are made, like if they actually do something about moving into like proper proof of authenticity or somehow monitor the way that the cryptocurrency is mined, because that seems to be the most harmful part of it for the energy consumption. Or if the energy consumption comes down from what it is now, or finally, if there is some way that they can calculate the environmental impact of creating an NFT and selling it, and then they have some sort of like an official system for offsetting the environmental impact. The same way that now, for example, when you book a flight, you can offset the environmental impact by like paying more for your ticket. But I think it needs to be like, uh, not just a guess, it needs to have more information before they could make that or that people could do it themselves when they do the NFTs. But if you just ignore all of this and just put NFTs on sale, right now I am... It just kind of looks like you don't care about the environment at all and that I'm not okay with. So it's the internet, so everybody is thinking about this in a very like black and white terms. Everything is either great or terrible, but uh, that's the long answer. And there, I think at this point is only a long answer for me. I had a friend of mine who contacted me about this and he had really um, interesting uh, points about all of these 
um, things which I think were smart and more based on facts. But at this point, like, I'm not the author ready to speak on this, so you shouldn't take my advice on this. But, like, be educated and, like, go to a source that is an actual news source, not just somebody on the internet, but, like, not some guy on the YouTube who is uh, speaking about this, but an actual newspaper. Basically, I don't have I don't have uh, enough knowledge to take any type of like responsibility to spread information on this, and you shouldn't take like internet conversations as fact. Nico, how do you say C on your la language? Uh, our alphabet doesn't have C, but like of course, like foreign words, we use the C in it. But in alphabet, we say C. So C is like C because our E is A. Tony is saying Bitcoin in general is a big problem, and I'm also hoping we can get NFT not connected to it. Um, yeah, it's also odd that an individual might get shamed for making an NFT, but people don't go around protesting cruise ships. <laughs> this is true. Also, when you think about environmental impact, um, because this is like more related to the area that I am in, in Finland, uh, sometimes cruise ships are a more environmentally friendly way to travel, but on some distances they are not. Like for example, if I leave from Finland, some of the cruise ships are environmentally more friendly option of going on a boat to the neighboring countries, but on some distances the plane is actually more environmentally uh, conscious decision to make rather than a boat. So this is also complicated. It's simpler to say that all planes are bad, but if you plan to travel anyway, just taking a boat is not necessarily the better option if you look at the actual facts. And this is information that you can research about like Finland and cruise ships. This I know enough about that I can say that I have an opinion on it. I would love to sell my digital artwork in a way that um, it is unique and it has been and that the money has been paid for me to create the art that I like to make, not somebody commissioning me to do a piece. Because if that happens to the digital art community, that will completely change uh, the way that people perceive digital art and it has been different for the entire duration that I've been making digital art. So if that thing changes, it's a huge, huge thing. So because of the potential good that there is 
if we are able to like solve some of these issues or find a way to at least calculate uh, the damage to the environment so that it can be uh, compensated for. But those are the reasons why I don't think that it's that easy that I just say that NFTs are completely evil, I'm never gonna do it. But if some of those issues can be solved, like it would change everything. I have some like hope that the art community will be more active in like making this change happen than if we were just talking about any other industry. I hope that artists are more environmentally aware to make that a priority, I hope. Because there's stuff that we, we could do, like as a community, if like we, for example, all agree that like it, there is uh, an extra tax or something that is used. In, in the process to make like the whole system sustainable. It's just a matter of like having enough uh, will to make it happen. But because there's so much money involved, I think that might also help with the motivation of people to find the right solutions for it. But I'm not developing this stuff. This is just someone's opinion on this topic that doesn't have any NFTs at this point. I don't want to make like black and white statements on this right now. Oh, I actually did no measurement for these pages, but maybe I will do that when I get to the line art stuff. Violet Jewel is asking, do you also like larger dog breeds? Um, I used to have a Newfoundland dog. Uh, Google that if you don't know what it is. I recommend anybody to Google that because Newfoundland dogs are amazing. He lived until he was uh, 12, almost 13. you made for Procreate channel were so fine. I always tried to mix yours Nicolie Lockertson I don't know who that is and Asuka 11 111 art style but could not find the perfect blend anyway. What do you think of their art? Sorry, I don't know who those are.
these are just some composition lines as uh, right now I noticed that I need to have this direction working like basically this whole curve I need to get the eye from here to here also I need to make the eye travel through this page to make this piece work Was it hard to choose your puppy breed? Uh, not really. I kind of always wanted to have a corgi. Um, just because I knew that I don't want to have another new fallen dog. Uh, because I don't have a yard. I, I don't think that would have been like a responsible thing to do anymore. <laughs> and corgis are like... They're not small dogs. They're kind of average-sized dogs, but like shorter. So it's like having a lower model of a normal-sized dog. I don't like those like tiny dogs. I like the super tiny ones because I just haven't seen a lot of like tiny dogs that behave super well. And I have this like very unscientific theory of why that is. And when I was walking my old dog, uh, the Newfoundland dog, it was pretty much as heavy as I am. And during winter, the roads here are like super icy. So um, you have to have like a well-trained dog to just be able to exist with it at all. So, so that you can walk your dog when you are walking during winter. But if you have a small dog, you can just like pull the leash no matter how it's behaving. And I think it doesn't motivate the owner to kind of train your dog the same way. This is completely unfounded based on no facts. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of trouble now trying to train uh, Vivi to be a well-behaved dog. I'm trying really hard. We have all kinds of resources, but yeah, it's a challenge. Also, corgis are like way more energetic than... Um... The new fallen dog was... He was just sleeping all day on most days. I really wanna like get a refill of like coffee. I will wonder if I can like take a small break. This is probably like really bad live streaming, but I'm just gonna get a bit more coffee because I've only had like one cup. I'll get it later. I wanna have a refill. Because I have still so much work to do. Probably should have some sort of like a transition thing for the live stream. I don't have one. But the blue color that I was missing here, I still really haven't found it. Usually when I'm trying to find a, the right color, it helps to have like a new layer. And then you can, for example, just do this with it, going to hue and saturation and just like play with the color. I think this is actually, yeah, that was faster than I thought. So this is the full color. I'm gonna get another cup of coffee, gonna be back soon and I'm gonna read the chat, sorry.
Oops, sorry. I had the mic off. What was I saying? Yeah, <laughs> about the iPad. Sorry. <laughs> so, iPad, screen size, the whole thing again. Oh my god. Uh, I will be upgrading, probably, but only if the new iPad runs cooler than this one. When I'm choosing an iPad and people ask me what iPad I use, uh, what I was saying when I was <laughs> muted is that um, the iPad that I use, I chose for this live stream. So if I had a smaller screen, my hand would be covering more of that screen. Um, most people don't have this need or when they are choosing what, what tablet to buy. And when I say this, I have noticed that in the replies, people kind of listen to what I'm saying, but they don't really get it. That the iPad that I need for this, these videos to happen, like it's not the right specs for most people on what type of iPad they should choose to buy. Because if I had, uh, if I was buying it just for myself to paint, if I didn't make any videos, I would consider like even the smallest iPad screen. I should have said like when I turned the mic back on and like, and that is the meaning of life. <laughs> mm. And that's how I understood the easiest way to make money without like actually doing anything. And that's really all I have to say about that. For space, I would recommend investing in uh, the iCloud rather than having storage space on your iPad. Because first of all, you are risking all of your files if you just have them tied to the physical product. If you just break it or drop it into the ocean, then all of your stuff is gone. But if you pay for the iCloud, I think that's a better deal because then you can store more stuff and your information is uh, safer and not attached to your device. So if you're thinking about which version, storage version to buy, then I would recommend the smaller ones because you can save a lot of money that way and you will never run into the memory limitations unless you are making videos. Because I used to make videos for this channel on my iPad and those took a whole lot of space. Right now, I'm still constantly battling with um, how to store all of the like the just the raw material for the videos that I'm making for this channel. Like every time that I think that okay, now I have enough storage, then I just run out immediately again. This card that I'm using to record this. Um, process it's two terras and I filled it like twice while making the previous video
um, high Mikko is the reason for going straight in with color as opposed to first grayscale, or is it a matter of specific effect you're trying to achieve that wouldn't be possible otherwise? Uh, the colors that I use wouldn't be possible with the technique of doing a grayscale painting first. I don't know if I'm like now repeating the same stuff that you just heard already, or was it when the mic was muted? But I feel very strongly that you should not start a painting with a grayscale. And I'm like, this is one of those things that like I'm like okay with people hating me for having this opinion. But um, when I was looking through like tons of portfolios where I, when I've been in a position of hiring a new concept artists, you can tell in just under two seconds when somebody is using the technique of like coloring a grayscale painting. And that's a huge amount of artists and it just makes all of their art look the same. Like just tons and tons of people paint in a way that make their paintings look the same. And in, in concept art nothing is more important than standing out and having unique ideas and unique way of saying them. So if you have make those choices Oh, I just can't recommend that in good faith to anyone. Especially since I know that it seriously harms anyone's ability to learn how to use color and understand that value is tied to color. That when you choose a yellow color, it doesn't have the same value as a blue color. And those inherent differences are so nuanced and difficult to learn that you kind of separate them to their own box of colors. I just haven't seen anybody who has been able to like overcome that. One of the clearest ways you can see this like in practice is like when somebody uses a grayscale image they don't understand that they go, don't can't go darker with the colors that they have already in the image and it's like a problem that is very specific to people who use this one technique. I'm not saying it's a wrong way to paint, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Especially if you want to do art as a living. Uh. I don't think it's a great idea. But if you ask for my opinion, you're gonna get my opinion. <laughs> Yours. You check your values now and then. Yes, you can see this on live stream because uh, you can see the screen doing this. But right now, for example, you are seeing this piece in color. But I just uh, click the power button, and if you look at the screen, it is in black and white. So this is something that I can do uh, quickly. But I usually don't do it often during live stream because uh, this uh, button press thing it's pretty tricky to do. So I might accidentally turn off my screen and that would like power off the screen and that would cut my uh, connection to Zoom and that would cut the entire live stream. So I try not to do it that too often. Because if I get the timing wrong, then I would just have to reset everything.
If you look at people who paint in color and design their paintings in color and then look at artists who design their images in black and white and then color the black and white image, I think you can tell the difference if you just see those artists enough. If you want to like search for people who do their painting design in black and white, go to ArtStation and like see any artists from the main page and you will find those examples. But people who paint in color, I think they are harder to put into the same box because of the technique, because everybody sees color and experiences the values like differently. And if you do it in a grayscale, you are kind of like taking yourself out of the process, which I don't think is a good thing. Because that's what we need from you as an artist. We need, we need your way of seeing things. I probably need to do this text stuff anyway in the line art phase, so we really need to have something there for a placeholder. This gives me a better idea of like just how active this whole area is, because it's a white-ish page. That's quite high contrast, so I might want to go lower with it. Still squiggly lines. Also, I probably make smaller text because I'm more interested in these sort of like yellow thingies. Somebody's asking, do you use references when painting? Yeah, all the time, when I can. And people often ask that. Usually when people ask me this reference question, um, I'm not gonna speak on your behalf, because I can't tell if this is what you meant. But often I've noticed that like people put this uh, painting and drawing something without a reference on some sort of a pedestal and I don't <laughs> I, I don't think that's the case like whenever you don't know how to draw or paint something look for a reference that's it there's no art police that is gonna come to your house and say that you're doing it wrong if you don't look for references how are you ever going to learn you can figure it out on your own without uh, information so whenever you need reference only even a little bit always look for references it will help
I think this page is kind of like wonky in perspective because it needs to go further out like this. When checking for composition, like turning your painting or illustration upside down like this is almost as useful as like flipping the canvas. What this does that uh, flipping the canvas doesn't do is that it takes my kind of uh, thinking brain out of the image and it forces me to see everything on screen as just like uh, abstract shapes. I'm not reading the crocodile or the turtle anymore. I'm just looking at where all the colors and blocks are placed. And that doesn't happen when I flip the canvas just horizontally. So this is useful for composition uh, fixing. Why does my pencil skip using Procreate when plugged in? I have no idea. There's no way for me to like troubleshoot that. saying because I've always been laughed at by my artist friends if I'm using references so I've always felt like I'm cheating and yes they are better artists than me They're better friends <laughs> ditch them immediately everything that I have learned to paint or draw it in somewhat okay way, it has come through using tons and tons of references. The only reason why I'm not able, I'm able to do some paintings without references sometimes is because I have already done dozens and dozens of paintings on that subject with references. So every time that you see me doing a painting without references, that is the result of using references for tons and tons of paintings. And I'm not just saying that's like one or two, but like literally dozens of paintings.
this an actual star or is it like a starfish? Yeah, starfish. Sometimes when I have like uh, glitches with the, the Apple Pencil, and this has only happened because I'm doing a live stream. And during these live streams, I'm now almost at that point when I'm reaching like two hours that the screen has been on. The current iPad screen, it gets quite hot once you have been painting for three hours straight. Now this is not something that most people will ever do. So take that into consideration when you think about upgrading your iPad. Most people will never be painting for three straight hours on a like 6000 pixel resolution piece. So if that is something that doesn't happen to you, then this just doesn't apply to you at all. But when I've been doing a really long live stream, the screen has been on all the time and I have the luminosity almost at maximum, which I wouldn't ever do for my own sake. It is just to wash out the reflection of the glass from this camera that is shooting the screen. But that's the reason why I have the light so bright. What was I saying? Yeah, so uh, in the previous, uh, I think it was uh, Apple laptop uh, showcase, they showed their like own M1 chip and the one unique feature that they kept reiterating over is like how cool it runs, that it's cool in your lap when you are using that laptop. So I hope that they will bring that to uh, iPads in the future because it seems like the gap between what is a laptop and what an iPad can do it seems to be getting closer all the time. So if they add that chip to iPad and enable it to run cooler, then that would be a useful upgrade for me because of this YouTube channel. But because of what I just said earlier, if you don't have a YouTube channel and you don't do live streams, this will probably not benefit you in any way. And it, it's not enough reason to buy a more expensive iPad because of it. This is just speculation. We don't know what the next iPad is going to be. Or do we? Uh, sometimes they have leaks. I guess they have doubled down on their efforts to prevent leaks from happening. I think some goldfish might be cool to have some sort of like these sort of salmon colors underneath the waves. These are way too bright. I'm gonna try and see if I can just lower the opacity if that is enough. It kind of is. reason why in those long-form painting videos sometimes the camera shakes is because I need to change the battery.
Suomi, just in case. Are you charging your iPad right now? No. I think I'm going to need to uh, take a TV out for another walk sooner than the iPad is going to run out of electricity. Let's see. 55. Yeah, I don't need to charge it. But I use my Nintendo Switch USB charger all the time. You, you probably have seen it in my videos. Do uh, turtles have tails? I feel like they should have tails. I'm gonna do a tail. Feels right. Atticus, thanks. Uh, Samantha is saying, really love your art. I love to draw, but I always get stuck because I'm a perfectionist. Not a good quality to have. How can I let that go when I'm drawing and just enjoy it? Don't live in the future. I mean... You only worry about the end result because you are worried about what other people are going to think about it. But no matter what they think about it, if that's all you care about, you are just missing the entire experience anyway. So even if they like it, you still fail to enjoy the process. But if they hate it, you still fail to enjoy the process. I recommend watching that video that I did a few weeks ago about how fast you should you be painting. Because it's really essential to like enjoy the process and just like let the process uh, breathe. And sometimes you understand why you needed to do that painting or why that idea came to you in a very like late stage of the painting. But before then you have to have this kind of like very humble mode that this is not really about you. You are kind of like listening to painting and what it has to say. But if you are too like concerned about how other people are going to perceive you through this painting, then you are not really like listening what the painting needs or illustration or drawing needs and what it has to say about you and who you are as a person because uh, the thing that I love most about art the absolute most is that doing art lets you kind of like know yourself in a deeper level and it's the 
most interesting way to get to know who you are as a person. But usually when you just want to get up good painting done, then you're just like not listening. That happens to me all the time, but it's important to notice that like these are selfish thoughts and you can't be selfish when you're painting. You have to be there for the painting and help it become the best that it can be. And usually that has nothing to do with technique. Doing more details doesn't make a painting look better, but like giving it what it needs does make the painting better. Those are two different things. What happened to the jellyfish? The jellyfish was uh, finished in the last uh, live stream that uh, I did on editing colors. It's done. It's posted. It's one of the few pieces where I have done two live streams to finish for painting. Also, I need to like apologize for the way that that last live stream happened, uh, because when I do live streams for my members on this channel, the people who have joined this channel, uh, I need to do a community post to give the people a link to that video. Otherwise, they, they won't get notified by YouTube that I have done a video or I'm going live. So I made a community post, but you even even if you are doing a members only live stream and it prompts you to do a community post, that community post by default is set to you to be viewed by everybody. So you have to like manually pull down all those levers and I understand that this could be annoying for somebody who is not a member to see that I'm doing a live stream for the members if they're not a member and that was not my intention I just did not know how the system works but I'm going to be making a lot of these mistakes as I learn how to use these different systems and I deleted that post and I made it again different settings because this again I found out only yesterday that when you do a post you can't set the visibility settings you can't edit them later you can edit the whole post and everything about it the link shown and so on but you can't change the visibility status uh, to be closed 
when it's uh, public. Which might make sense somehow, but I just didn't know that at all. I will be notifying on my um, Instagram story feed whenever I do these um, members only live streams because I think they deserve to know when I'm going live. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> funny back pin. Uh, I think they are turning forwards, even these. I hope that everybody understands that like everybody is benefiting from me having this membership to my channel uh, even if they are not a member. Like for example my last video I was able to make the decision of like emphasizing the beginning of a big project how to design a painting like that because I have the membership stuff because I will be able to post the long form video that has like the unedited a long form process in the pool for members. But the way that that benefits everybody is that I could make the decision of like having the beginning be the main focus of that uh, video on my channel. Because I know from statistics that the videos that have more emphasis on the beginning part, they always do worse retention wise. So otherwise I would have felt like I am wasting the entire footage if I didn't have those long form videos. But now that I know that I will be able to use that for other stuff as well, I felt like I will be able to highlight the design process and the beginning of the painting phase. And I think that benefits everybody. Also, of course, like the stuff. I would not be able to like have the recorder on right now because the previous SSD that I had for it was smaller, so those SSDs are super, super expensive, the portable ones. If you have an um, SSD that has USB in it, those are like three times cheaper than the ones used for uh, recorders like this one. If I wouldn't have it, I wouldn't have invested money in it. I didn't have the membership that increases the quality of my videos for everybody, I know. I hope everybody can understand that. I think there should be some kind of a bookmark here. I love book, especially um, being bookmarks come with the book itself.
Raven is asking what DPI am I using. Uh, for social media, I'm using 72 DPI, like the post that I made today on Instagram. And for print, I'm using 300 DPI or more, depending on the scale of the print and the print technology. Or if client has specific specifications for the print. Marcia for Tuna is asking, Mikko, do you have any advice for us on how to get over the fear of posting our artworks online? This might sound really harsh, but um, this is one of those videos that I need to like actually do someday and stop talking about it. Uh, and the video is... Nobody cares about your art. <laughs> like, I, I think knowing this at least for me, it's like a huge relief knowing that like nobody actually cares if I do a bad painting. Like absolutely, there's like no risk involved. Nobody is like physically hurt. No bad things happen. Maybe somebody might even have like a boost of confidence when they see me failing. But like absolutely nobody cares, especially if you haven't done a consistent for example, art posting on some um, forum for months and months. Absolutely nobody is watching. Somebody was asking me how many like artworks should they have before they start an art account on Instagram. And I just replied one, because that was an easy, fast reply to give to somebody. But <laughs> I think the question itself says a lot about the person that they were probably expecting that like I'm gonna give them some sort of like social media uh, scheduling plan of like this is what you need to do and then you start like blasting your Instagram page and then people will come. People will not come. Absolutely nobody will care at all <laughs> no matter how long have you been painting that one piece. Nobody will give a damn and this is supposed to be encouraging like nobody cares uh, and this is great so you should absolutely start posting your art right away and rest easy that it will have zero impact on the world especially if you haven't done that already for years and years and built some kind of audience doing that but uh, to build an audience like I always recommend um, young artists that start like building this uh, way of speaking online and how to use the different social media platforms. Those are really difficult skills to learn and they take a lot of time. So it's better to start right away so you can fail in uh, for the audience of like one or two <laughs> or your friends. Trust me. Even your parents, even your best friends, they don't really care that much about the quality of your art. They might some say something about it behind your back, but like really, of what consequence is that at all to anybody? If somebody is not supportive of your art when you're starting out, because you're probably not that great yet, then prove them wrong. It might take them years to it might take you years to prove them wrong, but like prove them wrong by doing and being consistent and getting better. But even if you're good, if you're bad, 
they won't care that much. Could you say hi to my five-year-old Heidi? Hey, Heidi. <laughs> she likes your videos too. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think I have a younger audience and then somebody was informing me on one of my posts that I have a lot of dogs watching these two streams. <laughs> Definitely I use these streams to play to my dog when I, for example, when I go out for a run or if I need to be away from the house for a few hours, I will put one of my live streams on so Vivi can hear me talk while I'm out. We were talking about uh, Corgis as a breed earlier. One thing that I did not expect that like when Corky parks. That's a really loud bark. And I think the good thing about those small dogs that I said that I don't want to have for myself is that like even when they bark at the loudest voice that they possibly can, it's still not that annoying. Like you can't hear it through a wall that well. But when Vivi barks, like something needs to be done immediately. Like obviously the way that all the dog training systems say that like you shouldn't react to the dog barking because that will only teach them that that's the way to get attention but when Vivi barks really loudly it's so loud that in this block of flats I can give her three minutes maximum to stop on her own but then I really need to like step in <laughs> so otherwise my neighbors will hate me to do something And I try to uh, react to it in a way that like something boring is going to happen when she barks. That it, like some sort of like chase playtime doesn't start, but that something boring will happen. I will put on headphones or something, or move around, but uh, nothing exciting is going to happen when she barks. And it's so hard to be boring around a corgi, because pretty much anything can be exciting to them. Just earlier when I was getting that cup of coffee, he was like running on the floor, thinking that this is some kind of a chase game that just started right now that involves her. Does the brush type matter? Absolutely not. At all. Buying my brushes won't make you a better artist at all. The best that I can do with that is that I have made my own brush set so that 
I can guarantee that you can use one of those brushes and do an entire painting. People often ask me what brushes I use, and that question is inherently wrong. Most of my paintings are all done with only one brush per painting. So in that brush set, I don't use all the brushes to do a painting, I use one out of those. For my graphic style illustrations, I use different brushes. And for example, for this, I'm going to use a different brush for like blocking in the cell shaded look later. But the same applies for like 99% of my art that it's using one brush for a painting. I was recently having this uh, online call uh, for a coaching session where I did actual feedback of a person who asked for my feedback in this sort of a coaching call. And that requires actual preparation. So I went through all of their work and what they were aiming to do and so on. And we talked about the companies that they are gonna apply for and so on. But one of the things that I said to this person that I could see in one of the paintings that they had used one of these um, grass blade brushes for foreground. And the grass blades were like this in the foreground. And in the top half there were was a leaf brush that had like leaves like this in the foreground elements. And I said, like honestly, using a custom brush for these two elements saves you no time and it's taking away from all the like choices that you could be making for these grass elements and foliage elements in the foreground. So like just deleting a brush like that, I think it's a better idea. Usually these sort of like brushes that like create clouds and so on, like they take away options and therefore like they usually end up like just harming the painting when it comes to composition and stuff. Pretty much all digital artists at some phase, when they are more experienced, they go through this sort of like love affair period with the round brush when they like come to this realization that like actually these brushes don't help me paint at all. Round brush is all you need and then they use the round brush. I've had that phase. It's great and I could still use round brush for painting but like fundamentally what that phase is about for most artists is like that like freedom when you realize that like I don't need to search for a perfect tool to make art. I just need to <laughs> make it. Damn it. Okay, I think I have all of the elements blocked in here, so I need to stop because we haven't eaten anything and it's three already. Uh, I think Vivi might be already on a walk. Hello from Dubai. Uh, I was in Dubai. Nice looking place. I'm a one brush gal too. Love the jacket brush. Yes, a jacket brush in Procreate is great and it's already in the program. You don't need to buy anything. Okay. Thank you guys for joining this stream. I'm not going to do like the long winded stopping like I usually do and I'm just gonna stop the stream. Thank you everybody for joining and I hope that you go and join the Art from Comfort Zone challenge. Instructions are on my Instagram page and like just keep making it. It's still gonna go on for I think a few months. So you still have plenty of time. And if you're wondering that what you should do to start making art, I highly recommend watching that video. Of course, like I'm gonna like get more minutes out of it, but it's a short video and I think it's a beneficial one. And it's going to annoy some people, but the reason why I made the Art from Comfort Zone challenge is for people like you who have this uh, weird idea about art that it should be something impressive for other people. Where And if you want to improve as an artist, the number one priority that everybody should have is finding that thing that you like doing 
not having a goal of what kind of art you want to do in the future, but right now when you are making art, noticing those moments when you actually like the painting that you are doing. Not the painting itself, but like, like the action of painting. I think it's very important to pay attention to those moments, because if you can find that thing that is for you, then you won't have trouble with that like 10,000 hour milestone of like putting in the hours. But if you think about art as just as practice and like constant challenge, you are gonna like burn out and quit and get frustrated because it's not going to be fun for you. So it's imperative to make it fun for you. Okay, I said I'm gonna stop quickly and not like blabble on, so I said <laughs> stop. Thank you. I'm gonna be in Lapland and do maybe more art there, but I'm also going to just relax and enjoy the scenery. Okay, see you guys later. Bye!